Hello miteinander, I'm Geshady6 and this is a brand new Let's Play. We're playing an unofficial Toho game this time. It is Toho Kokayaku The Game. Now why would they have The Game in the title? Well, because it is actually just a pack-in. This game is included in Konagusuri's 16th album Toho Kokayaku. And we're going to take a pretty good look at it. We have um, five different difficulties to choose from. For the purposes of this let's play, we're going to leave it at normal. And now that we've set that up, we can start the tutorial level. It is a very simple, sterile stage, and it teaches us the basic controls. All of them are written on these ancient hieroglyphic tablets that I cannot read, because I'm not a major in archaeology. But even if I'm not, this game is very simple in its core. You can run around, you can jump, you can shoot, but that's not quite all you can do. Um, we have a few more skills at our disposal, and the most used one is our air dash. Um, the whole game is pretty much built around that move, um, with all these gimmicks that will pop up. Um, apart from that, there's also minor moves like this wall jump here. Um, very easy to use, just press the jump button when you're close to a wall. No other combinations or anything needed. But, now that we know that, we can choose our stage to start the game on. We're going to go with what the sta um, game suggests and pick Nazarin's stage. That screen is completely original. I have never seen anything remotely similar to it. Totally. But, um, here's the first stage. Um, looks very quiet, very calm now. Our protagonist is Byakuren Hijiri, magician and final boss of Toho 12, undefined fantastic object. Um, she is searching for Nazarin, it seems, but she's not here, so let's investigate. Whoops, we fell down. And our adventure has come to an end. Just messing around, guys. Um, this is what's supposed to happen. Um, so. I really like how this game introduces you to that stage. Um, at first everything is very tranquil, but um, as soon as you drop down there, the action begins. Um, now when it comes to action platformers like these, um, some games favor the fighting over the platforming, but with this game the emphasis is really on the stages. When you count them, the game really throws a lot of enemies at you, but they're just lots of small fry. They're really not all that dangerous and they die very quickly. Their purpose seems to be more to uh, mess up your platforming, to intimidate you, um, pretty much just complement level design, which is really much more important to how this game works. And this is the first section. Um, every level in this game consists of three sections and a boss. And now we're in the second section of this level where we discover giant mechanical Japanese dumplings? Who would build something like that in an underground cave and to what purpose? I have no idea, must be a very very strange person. Nonetheless, um, they're not easy to navigate past, um, especially when fairies are shooting loads of bullets at you, but fear not, there's a wedge of cheese down here to regenerate our health. If you ever find a random piece of cheese lying around in a cave, go for it, it's gonna be delicious. Especially if it's one of those with a blue crust on it. Um, there is something else you can do while firing, by the way. You can direct your shots a little bit up or down. However, this may seem useful now, but it won't be relevant for too much longer. You'll understand why soon. So, we have just um, entered the final section of this level where we're riding on an elevator, very slow moving elevator, it's a pretty easy scene. Here you can see me aiming my shots down. We have to watch out for these spikes, um, however they're not Mega Man spikes. Um, unless you're playing on Lunatic, where, where they are. On Lunatic, um, this scene is also sped up a lot. Um, you're gonna have a much harder time keeping up with this elevator and you can die very easily, but we won't have to contend with any of that. Alright, we've left that bit um, with the elevator behind. Now what's next to do is get past these umbrellas with our trusted Yokai Jesus Air Dash. 
Now, before I have mentioned that your air dash is your most important tool in this game, and that's kind of true, but it is not an overpowered mechanic. Um, you still have to watch out because its use is actually limited. And um, whenever you use it, you see a bar flashing up around your character, and when that runs out, you can't air dash anymore. However, it immediately regenerates as soon as you touch a surface. So, that's always useful. All in all, your air dash makes you feel very agile, and it gives the game a really good flow. Oh, would you look at that? We have discovered the boss chamber, and now we face our first opponent, Nazarin, the stage 1 boss of Toho 12. Now, uh, she is actually one of the followers of Byakuren, however, only indirectly. She is actually servant to another character, who in turn follows Byakuren. Um, I don't quite know why she would fight us in this game, since I don't know the story of it all. But you know what my theory is? It's because we took her moldy old cheese. And she doesn't take kindly to that. Nope. She is furious and wants our hide. So, um, we're gonna have a little bit of fight with her. You know what's nice about this LP? It gives me a chance to talk about the Toho 12 roster without actually playing that game, because I am horrendous at that one. But, um, we are starting this fight. Um, you can see Nazarin's health bar at the very top. It is very long, and that will tip you off that this, um, that the bosses in this game are pretty durable. However, I wouldn't actually say that they overstay their welcome in any way. Um, not only because the fights are fast and furious, but because they're divided into several phases. Nazarin has four phases, if I count correctly. Um, we've just reached the second one, uh, where she shoots lasers that split up. This one gave me a lot of trouble for a while, but um, the best position to stay in is actually under that umbrella. That umbrella will actually shield you from all the shots that come from above, and if they come from other directions, well, um, very few of them will actually make it into your little niche, so you will have an easy time. Um, I've gotta say this fight will probably look pretty difficult for you, but it's really more bark than bite. Um, there's a lot of projectiles on screen, but they're either slow, predictable, or just don't have very large hitboxes, so it's still pretty much the easiest boss fight in the game. Now she's actually trying to hit us with Japanese dumplings on skewers. Why would they hurt us? Are they poisonous? Maybe Nazarin just makes really terrible dumplings, maybe. But uh, we've survived that phase as well, so we're in the final one now. This is like the very first one, just faster and more difficult. Still, Nazrin, pretty easy boss fight. Um, one interesting thing is Nazrin doesn't actually hurt you when she runs into you, so all her frantic jumping around is just trying to make you nervous. However, she can spawn bullets directly inside you, so you should still be careful. But with that, we have giant explosions that don't actually affect uh, the vicinity at all. They're just show. And we have subjugated Nazarin. Hooray. Um, you know, before I talked about how Nazarin is a servant and to Byakuren, she's kind of like Chen is to Yukari. In that she is a servant's servant. You know, I've always wondered about Gensokyo, a land of magic. Wonders, dreams, and mystery. It still has slavery, by the way. Definitely a place you want to live in. Totally. And all these uh, man-eating demons. Totally a paradise. But we have cleared the first stage, and we're back at the stage select. You might be noticing a little bit of a difference, but more on that next episode. I'm Gash86. This was Toho Kokayaku the game. Bis bald.